Now in this video, I'll give you an in-depth review of the brand new Samsung Galaxy Note 10 Lite, so keep watching. Hey, what's up guys? Adam Lobo here and you're watching Adam Lobo TV. If you guys are new, hello and welcome. Do consider subscribing to my channel as I release videos at least twice a week, sometimes it's three times a week. And if you're returning as a subscriber, welcome back my friends. Now since this review unit did not come in a box, let's dive in into the specs of the phone. Now the Samsung Galaxy Note 10 Lite comes with the Exynos 9810 chipset. So yes, it is a 10nm chipset compared to the 7nm chipset on the Note 10 and even the Note 10 Plus. Then it also comes with the Mali G72 MP18 instead of the Mali G76 MP12 on the other Note 10 variants. And then it comes with 6 gigs of RAM with also 128 gigs of storage. And then it comes shipped with Android 10 with one of my favorite Android skins, which is the One UI version 2. Now going into the color finishes, it comes with three colors for you guys to choose from where the one which I have is called the Aura Red and how fitting of the colors since we just celebrated Chinese New Year. So yes, good thinking Samsung. And then there's also Aura Black and also Aura Glow. Now starting from the design and build, when I first held the phone, I couldn't feel a huge difference in weight although the you know, 10 light is supposed to be heavier. And then there's three cameras at the back and also a flash where it has a brand new square camera design with absolutely no camera bump. So there's no issues typing this on a surface. And then the front has a flat screen design like all mid-range phones are right now. So that is good news for those of you who never liked a curved screen. And yes, it has an in-display fingerprint sensor. Now looking at the ports and buttons, looking down below, there is the USB-C port. So that's good. But on the left hand side, you'll find the headphones jack. Yep. And also you find a single mono firing speaker instead of stereo like the other two Note devices. And yes, since this is also a Note, you'll find the S Pen down over here. Then you find the power button and also the volume rockers are on the right instead on the left where you'll find a dual SIM card slot and also a micro SD card slot which supports up to 1TB of storage. Now as for the phone screen, to my surprise, although that this is a light variant of the Note 10 family, the size sits between the Note 10 Plus and also the Note 10 at 6.7 inches which has a Super AMOLED display with a resolution of 1080 by 2400 pixels. And as expected, viewing videos on YouTube and Netflix was great where there is the hole punch right in the middle, similar like the other Note 10 devices. Now looking at the three camera specs, one has a 12 megapixel f1.7, 27mm wide lens, a 12 megapixel f2.4, 52mm telephoto lens, and a 12 megapixel f2.2, 13mm ultra wide angle lens. Now there's a slight difference in terms of the camera specs between the light variant compared to the other Note devices, which I'll leave a link down below for you guys to see the exact differences between those. Now pictures for the main lens was great since it is using the latest One UI which gives a better image processing and yes, there was great consistency in all of the images when switching lenses as well. Now the portrait mode was also nice with great background separation even there is no depth sensor like the highest Note 10 Plus variant as you guys can see. As for the ultra wide angle lens, I've always loved how the images turned out for the ultra wide angle lens where Samsung usually makes sure there's no distortion at the side when taking photos using the lens. Then as for the night mode, I was honestly blown away by the images where the image processing for the night shot seems to be the biggest strength of this phone's camera where there was a huge difference when activating the night mode. Now as for the front camera, it comes with a higher 32 megapixel f2.2 aperture compared to a 10 megapixel for the other Note devices. Now since it has a higher megapixel count, the image quality was amazing and what's cool is that during the selfie mode, there's also the option to change between a slightly wide mode in the camera app and yes, that mode is also available for the portrait selfie where the images also look really nice with amazing bokeh. Then as for video, the rear camera records up to UHD 4K 2160 up to 30 frames per second instead of 60 frames per second like the other Note devices where the videos look nice and had a very high quality range where you can change the focal length of the lens even during recording which was really nice. Then there's also the super steady mode like the other Note devices for video but the video footages even look stable if it's switched to the wide angle lens even without the super stable on so that was great to know as well. 
Then as for the front, it records up to UHD 2160 up to 30 frames per second as well, where the videos look way more stable in 1080p resolution. Now as for the phone speakers, I did mention that it is a mono firing speaker, but it did sound great. I did find that it had a very good volume with nice highs with a decent bass as well. And here's a quick sound test. Now as for the phone software, it is shipped with the latest Android 10 with the brand new One UI version 2 skin which again is one of my favourites since I have been using the One UI 2 a lot as my daily driver for the Note 10 Plus and I still love it and it has no issues whatsoever. Now another surprising factor is of course the phone's battery because although there is a headphones jack and also there is the S Pen, Samsung has managed to squeeze in a larger 4500mAh of battery compared to 4300mAh on the Note 10 Plus. But to my surprise, I've only managed to get about 5 hours and 25 minutes of screen on time when I was at 10% battery where to be honest, I was expecting a bit more. But I guess this boils down to a better processor than the higher flagship of the Note 10 Plus has compared to the light variant where there is a fast charging present in the phone but there's no wireless charging so keep that in mind. Now as for gaming, playing games at PUBG was great with no complaints and of course no heating issues when playing games really long on the phone. And lastly, let's talk about the S Pen. Now the build quality was the same as the Note 10 and also the Note 10 Plus where writing on the S Pen on the device was perfectly fine. So was the other low Bluetooth features by using the button on the S Pen as a camera shutter or even a remote. But the only difference between the higher flagship Note devices and this S Pen is the fact that this does not have a built-in gyroscope so you can't do the gesture movements on this particular S Pen. Now in conclusion, in my opinion, what Samsung did in this case was to release a way affordable option for those of you who love the S Pen and don't mind the tiny little sacrifices here and there. Now in terms of the price announcement, since I received the phone way before the official price, so stay tuned here on Adam Lobo TV, I'll write it down at the description below. But the question remains, where does this particular Samsung Galaxy Note 10 Lite stand in the packing order? Well, to me, the only so-called competitor is the Samsung Galaxy S10e. But then again, there's no other smartphones out right now which has the S Pen. So probably this is a leak on its own. But do let me know what you guys think of the brand new Samsung Galaxy Note 10 Lite at the comment section below. Would you guys get it? Aside from that, thank you so much for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you did, be sure to give this video a nice big thumbs up. Like, share and subscribe to Adam Lobo TV if you guys haven't done so. Don't forget to hit the bell icon. Just next to it to get notified for my future videos. Thank you so much for watching. This is Adam Lobo, and I'll poke you guys in my next video.